wrap, guys. See in the background. Uh, on the back is where all my contact info is. It also has my logo and it has all my contact info on there. So this is going to be interesting. This big semi just pulled in here and it's blocking my way out. So now I'm going to have to back my trailer up and go out this way. Right there. So we'll see how that goes. Not a big deal. I've been used to backing this trailer up all the time. Oh, by the way, I got a new spot. I had this entire section here. Now I can just pull right up and then drop my trailer off and drive on away. So I don't have to worry about backing it into the spot that I used to have down there further. The reason why I don't have my contact information on the side and just the logo is because I want to keep it as simple as possible. I want everyone that sees any material, any marketing material that I have, whether it be my trailer, my uh, uniforms, um, postcards, flyers, my uh, logo on my face business Facebook page, any of that stuff, social media, they see that logo everywhere. And to have anything else on there, to me, just clutters up my logo, green on the white background, that's what my logo is. So it's just a giant billboard. I do have my contact info on the back here. You can't see because it's down. And I already showed it on an Instagram post um, about a month ago when I got this done. So all my contact info was on there. So as people are sitting behind me at a stoplight or a stop sign or they're driving behind me or whatever, I, a lot of times I have this closed anyway. If I'm in a neighborhood with several houses, I just keep it closed so it doesn't you know, encourage anyone to go wandering into my trailer to look and see what I have. So while I'm sitting here in the neighborhood like this, typically for a long time I have that up so people can see my contact information. But as I'm driving by or they're driving by me, they just see my logo and that encourages them them to look up my company's information you know they just Google and then boom my Facebook page comes up and it acts very similar to a website um, obviously there's differences between the two but it's free and I've got a lot of content on there and a lot of reviews and likes and, and honestly when I ask people how they contacted me and why it's because they googled lawn care or they googled the actual name of my company found my Facebook page and that's all they needed to know because they found all the information and the ways to contact me and everything on there and you know, in all honesty, um, people aren't going to remember your phone number or your email or your website or any of that stuff as they're driving by you or you're driving by them. It's just, what, what are they going to see? If there's too many things on the trailer, it can just be overwhelming. I know I feel that way when I look at a lot of trailers. I mean, there's so many awesome trailers out there. Don't get me wrong. I thought about a lot of creative ideas for my trailer, but then I realized, you know, I just want to keep it simple. I'm already well known in the neighborhoods I'm in I just want to grow that and then as I branch into other neighborhoods and keep growing my business I just want that to be branded you know yeah there's a lot of white trailers out there and green is obviously a common color but not like this just plain green with on the white background um, it's eye-catching it's branding it's consistent everyone's just gonna see it constantly and therefore they will be t it'll be top of mind for them when they're looking for lawn care services and also uh, the final thing is that I've noticed in the past when I just had a magnet, you know, or just my, my uniforms or whatever, I've noticed that the people that will research my company, they'll actually take the time to Google my company's name and look into it versus just seeing a phone number and calling impulsively. Those are the ideal clients that I want. Those are the ones that I've had for almost the entire time. Or, you know, they just found me last year or something, but they they pay me on time. They have nice properties. They're nice people. Um, you know, all kinds of other benefits. You know, they send me a holiday card and sometimes, you know, a gift and whatever. I mean, none of that stuff is required by any means, but that just kind of tells you the kind of character and the mindset that these people are in versus the people that are just looking for the cheapest person to come in and hack down their weeds real quick and, and leave, you know, once or twice a month or something. You know, those are the people that are looking for quick, easy answers. You know, they don't want to invest too much time and, and brain power into anything else, but just finding a number, calling it, or a website or an email, sending out a quick mat. Even that, I, I've noticed, is, is not, you know, Every phone call that I get, like every um, non-ideal 
customer that contacts me is always through the phone um, or a, a Facebook message because that's just the quickest, easiest way for these people. They don't want to invest time in clicking on an email, going into their email box, typing up a nice email. That's just too much for them. They just want to be super quick and just get the information. How much do you charge? Do you do this? Do you do that? Can, when can you start? I need it like tomorrow. You know, like those are the people I try to stay away from because they, it never works out for me in my company setup. Those aren't my ideal clients. So having just a logo like that is just one more deterrent to keep the the, the lazy people that just want a quick, easy service to just, you know, come in real cheap or whatever. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm trying to attract, you know, the, the middle class, you know, upper class uh, clients that are going to pay me what I need to be paid for the value that I provide and appreciate that value. And are not like, you know, I don't care about any of that. Just mow and go, you know, like that's not my ideal client. There's a large variety of clients in my area, so I can really pick and choose. And I, in my travels since uh, the winter, when I started my, uh, my new series, get to know the pro, by the way, a little plug there, check that out. Um, if, uh, you know, in my travels, everywhere I've gone, there's similar neighborhoods just like I'm in. Yeah, the prices are different, the market's different, the clients are different, but there's a variety just like here. I mean, I'd be the exact same variety, but there's still a variety. You just might have to go out and find it, drive a little bit, build up a route a little further away so it's worth your time and you uh, end up increasing profits over time because you're staying in a particular neighborhood or area instead of just driving there one yard and then driving away you know you got to make some of these uh, strategic decisions to build up in that way so all of this stuff is factored in for me when I make business decisions like what am I gonna you know what kind of trailer am I gonna use or do I need am I gonna get it wrapped you know what am I gonna do you know uniforms how am I gonna do this and that colors whatever all that stuff has gone into factor in the beginning and continues all the way through up till now my fifth year and it's going to continue you know evolving so it's all about branding for me and attracting my ideal clients and that's what's worked for me based on experience uh, over the years and asking people all the time how did they hear about me and just getting all that data that i can to keep um, increasing the awareness of my brand and to keep growing my business and so this is has been my default setup for a trimmer. When I got the trailer, I was super busy. I had no time to really come up with too much. I'm all about creating my own, you know, racks, but enclosed is different than open trailer. So I wasn't able to repurpose all of the same stuff and the same setup from my open trailer to my enclosed trailer. But this is what I came up with. It's functional, but not fashionable. Just some random strip of wood, screw it all in, got this rack from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, screw it in there. This was like several different chip, trips back and forth to find the right thing that this would fit in and it fits in. Pretty decent, but you know, not permanent by any means. Just got a little bike hook thing there, screw in there. And it fits on really good. Just and it can just come grab it and go and that's what I want something super easy don't have to like bungee cord things or anything like that obviously racks are the best I just didn't have time to invest um, or the money at the time to invest in yet another thing as well as I kind of take pride in making my own stuff and putting things together like this but you know, I honestly ran out of time, patience, and energy to come up with something other than this. This was working. I just left it. So this is what I had, you know, the whole second half of the season. So I finally got these installed, or I should say we, uh, Will with Will's Lawn Service. Stopped by yesterday on a rainy day. None of us could do any work. I told him I was going to try and get these set up. And, you know, a couple of times he's told me, hey, man, I can help you out with those because they can kind of be a pain. And... Scott, I remember, told me the same thing. So these guys have already had these trimmer racks. They know the deal. So I definitely took Will up on that offer to come help me. I had no idea it was going to be uh, as much work as it was. Not saying they're not easy, but we did have a little bit of an issue. And I'll, I'll point that out in a second. But these are the Pro Series Green Touch Trimmer Racks. I got the two position because I only have two trimmers, the FS90, steel FS90 that I turned into, um, you know, my own combi system. I just got the 
hedge trimming or articulating head attachment from the combi system and I just took the uh, string trimmer head off that's just in my truck or in my in my garage or whatever I never use that unless something were to happen to this one um, so I just keep this on all the time helps me out I've got a lot of properties with some big giant shrubs that I need to get on a ladder and still use this to get to them but so this is my go-to trimmer now the echo 2620 that I got last year from echo being a part of the UAG program so I just have these two I mean this was always just sitting in the back of my truck bed locked up but now I can have them both here again I hardly use this I'll probably change the position put this one up there and this one down here so it's at you know uh, waist level so I can just grab the trimmer and put it back easier than reaching up for that one so but you know you have to adjust the, the engine mounts and all that but yesterday I told Will I'm like you know what we already have a setup like this like this one's already up here just let's just leave it I can always switch it out myself that's easy enough so the two of us knock this out in a couple of hours I'm not sure how long it would normally take but um, I mean Will basically did all the work I just kind of like you know was there for moral support <laughs> But uh, he's, he's definitely a handy guy, and that helped out. And I'm glad he was there to help me out because I would have got so frustrated trying to put this up myself. I already attempted once, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's way too many parts in this box. I don't have time for this right now. It's just I'm constantly working nonstop, so I don't have time. I'm glad he, he helped me out because this would have I would have probably never figured this out, would have gotten really frustrated, and it just would have been a bad scene. But let me just explain real quickly what happened. So when we tried to take this out, this one out the first time, it was getting stuck coming in and out of here. It wasn't nice and smooth. It was almost like it was at a slight angle. So it was like, you know, pu putting pressure on it, trying to take it out. You know, obviously you have to pull this out a little bit and then you should just be able to pop this out and take it. But it was not working out. It only worked when it was straight on in and out, uh, which is what you would assume it was it would be. But when I looked over from this angle here, I could tell that it was a little off. I could see that the pole of the trimmer was at, at an angle like this way, I believe, slightly. So I'm like, well, what do we do to fix that? You know, we called Wally with Beach River um, and he, he was helping me out over the phone. And one of the things that he said that you might notice already with me focusing now, um, he said, make sure that you're putting this L bracket properly. You know, he has it like this on all of them, all four of them. He said, you know, sometimes some guys don't realize and they have them like this by accident where, you know, one's one way, one's the other way, the short way and the long way. He said he has all the short ways against the wall so that they're all sticking out as far as possible from the wall. Now, I have no idea why this is the case, but we realized after trial and error because it gave me the idea like, wait a minute, let's just try these two here like this to have these come out just a little bit more um, than they already were when the long side is up against the wall and that might straighten this out. So that's what we did and now it works perfectly. So I'm not sure if that is has ever happened to anyone else or if that was a part of a plan somehow, some way uh, with Green Touch. Uh, the manual, you know, was very, it's very simple, very clear directions to get it done. It used two figures, figure one and two of either having the L bracket like this or having it like that but it didn't really say why and when you use one way versus the other. So um, I know the goal is to kind of have them out as far as possible off the wall. That's what Wally was saying. Um, but I have them pretty close to the wall and the engine mounts are still perfectly fine, clear from the wall. There's not going to be any banging or anything like that. But for me, the further out from the wall, the less room I have in between here because I have a seven foot trailer, not an eight and a half foot wide trailer. So I need to make sure that I utilize my space as much as possible. So the closer these can be up against the wall, the better. So by keeping those with the, the long end against the wall, keeps these closer to the wall. And then this one, these two, we just had to adjust to the short side and then they're perfectly fine now now it lines up so if anyone ever has that issue or is going to have that issue or is struggling with that issue right now that's that's what you got to do to fix it you have to alternate just kind of play around with it until you get you know the right situation either these this side has the l bracket like that or that side does whatever however you got to mix and match it so that they so that it lines up so that the angle is right so again i don't know why that is it might just be me and my trailer but 
this is what we had to do to figure it out. We were getting pretty frustrated, but now it works perfect. So I'm happy. It's secure, super easy with the blocks and everything. Those of you that don't know the deal, there's plenty of videos about it on their website and everything, but the Pro Extreme comes with the engine mounts and everything now. And you got the lock and the whole same mechanism as the blower rack that I showed in a previous video. I don't even notice that the blocks are on there. I mean, I go to grab the, the shaft sometimes when I'm walking in between properties and I tend to grab right around there. So the block is always there. So I just have to remember to just grab it a little bit, you know, ahead, no big deal. So I can still grab it right there. Um, but yeah, nothing gets in the way. I thought I would notice a difference in the weight distribution, but I mean, these aluminum pieces are so light, you don't even notice, at least I don't, so. That's my setup, 100% complete now. I also got a, a, the uh, spool, the green touch trimmer line holder right there. So I put it right here because I want it to be easily accessible. One of the things I did, not to make this video too much longer, but I keep all of my key components. I have my, my, my water cooler, my safety and uh, first aid and all that quick and accessible at all the entrances and doors. So now I can just open that door, fill up my water bottle or grab the fire extinguisher in an emergency or grab a band-aid or something if I need something. Same thing with here, the trimmer, rat, uh, the trimmer line. I can just keep it right here. All I gotta do, this usually stays open when I'm you know, in between stuff. When I'm using the, by the time I get to using the trimmer, you know, I'm not using the trimmer for nearly as long as I'm using the mowers. So I grab the trimmer, I'm trimming. If all of a sudden I run out of string, I can just run back over here. I keep the, the door down because I'm just gonna be that out there for a few minutes trimming and edging and then come back. So I can just easily grab some line right from here. I don't even have to walk into the trailer or open anything. I just reach right over, grab the trimmer string and uh, fill it back up and then go. So that's the whole point, the method to my madness where I place things is so that I can get to it quickly and easily without having to uncover stuff or navigate through anything. I wanna open a door and just get to it real quick, and that's it.